Hey guys, welcome back to Transmit the 1075. Came across the video today that I want to discuss. Um, it's got a couple of things that I think are unique, a couple things are just pet peeves of mine, a couple things that are, I think are just philosophical ways that I think firefighting should be done, and I want to hear how guys, uh, what their opinions are. And I will say, like I try to say on all my videos, this isn't about ridiculing people. This isn't about saying they're dumb and I'm smart. This is nothing like that. This is a channel where we discuss fires. And so if you just want to watch fires with no commentary, you know, maybe this isn't the channel for you. But if you want to think about things and uh, hear other guys' opinions about how things are conducted across the country, uh, this is what I started. I, this is a channel that I've created. Um, so, okay, so let's start off where I found this online. And so um, this was, is in Pennsylvania. It's in a town called Plum. Um, and again, we're going to dig in a little bit here and say things that I think they were done wrong or whatever else or, or suggest, you know, things could have been done differently. But at the end of the day, the police and the neighbor saved someone and they put the fire out. So... Um, again, these are just for tactical discussions and thinking uh, uh, outside the box and just trying to make the world a better place, as I always say. So it isn't personal to them, So, but let's get into it. So a 77-year-old plum woman was taken to the hospital for evaluation Thursday after being rescued by, uh, from her burning home by the neighbor and borough police. The resident, Butch uh, Bankert, said he was going back and forth between the house and shed along the 200 block of front, oh my God, my, my reading is horrendous, Frontenick, Frontenick Road, where he got a call from a friend about a police officer running back and uh, running back of his neighbor's house. Uh, basically, he saw the officer with the fire extinguisher and knew something was wrong, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, they had to break, break the center uh, of the window out uh, and they, we pulled her out from the window in the back. I think she was in the bedroom. It was a little intense for a bit. Smoke was rolling pretty good. Um, but at the end of the day, look, kudos to this department, the neighbors, the police, and everyone involved. They saved the life and they put the, put the fire out. That being said, um, let's get into it and go over what maybe could have been better, things I think that get wrong on many fires, not this, just not just this one. And so let's talk about it. So I'm seeing a, uh, a gurney, EMS is bringing in a stretcher in the back. Uh, my guess is that victim has been out already, is on the back side. All right, so this is a split level. And so let me get this drawing out. Okay, so this is, if you're on the East Coast, I, we refer to this to a split level, a bi-level. Uh, essentially, uh, it's a house that has the first floor, instead of it being completely underground, half of the first floor is, you know, sort of like a basement. You'll see here, right, this is essentially the floor of of the second floor or the first yeah i'd say i guess the second floor and this below ground or uh, below this point is the basement so you see here that this this isn't exactly you know i went online you can find 50 different uh blueprints of different layouts but i think this is as close as i can find to what this i think is close to being which is here's your front door a typical split level has a foyer um, when you first walk in and you have half the stairs going up, half the stairs going down, right? You're essentially 
at the landing here, you're halfway between the first floor and the second floor, and you go up half a flight of stairs and you're at the, on the top floor and halfway down and you're in the basement for all intents and purposes. So in this case here, I think this is genuinely what it looks like, although I think these things are switched. My guess is this is, when you'll see around back, the kitchen is probably here and this dining area is here. My guess is this is a living room, family room, or whatever you wanna call it. And the the again, a little different here, and I guess these are likely to be bedrooms or something like that. Now, guys can tell me I'm completely wrong, and I probably am because, like I said, there's I went online, there's 30 different floor plans of a typical split level, but something to this effect. Okay, let's continue onward. Now, one of the things I wanna bring up, um, and again, I realize there's, as I mentioned at the beginning when I read that article, look, I'm from the old school that you almost always go to the front door. Now, in this case, I'm bringing this up to discuss it, but I realize this isn't the perfect scenario because if you get a call that there's somebody at the window in the rear, then in all likelihood, guys are gonna go around the back and get that victim from from uh, with a ladder or whatever else. So I realize also when anytime there is a report of victims trapped or you actually have someone at the window, that sends any incident to, <laughs> to 11. And so policies that are normally followed can sometimes change for reasons I completely agree with. But one thing I wanted to bring up today and I want guys to talk about and tell me what you think about is I am really an advocate for going to the front door on almost every incident. Again, maybe this isn't it because there's somebody at the window, uh, but I would argue potentially if they've already been rescued by the police and civilians, then you should go back to, to traditional firefighting tactics. But I don't really know in this case when they got there and wh where that victim was. Were they out already? Was it an unknown? Was it not reported over the radio? Anyway, why would you go to the front door? So I've learned this in my volunteer days, in my career days, even in classes I've taken in New York City. Everyone has generally had the same philosophy, which is always go to the front door. And by doing so, um, it, it has many, many benefits. And I'll let guys chime in here if I miss any of these. Uh, but for one, the reason why I always like going to the front door is for ease of finding the stairs. And that's the basement steps or the second floor stairs or whatever. So when you, not always, but 98% of the time, if you get to the front door and you get inside, you're gonna find the stairs. And so there's multiple reasons for that. One is to go find victims. If I need to find, if I need to get to the second floor, I've already found the stairs and I'm on my way. If it's a basement fire, I know, if, generally speaking, if I find the stairs to the to the second floor, typically the stairs um, to the basement are very close by, behind it, to the side, or whatever. So it's a good uh, tactic. And what I think is the most important is, let's say you have a first floor fire. By protecting the stairway, this is a big FDNY thing that I've always learned and I always carry with me my entire career, is if you have the hand line and you go in to the first, uh, through the front door, you are protecting egress. If anyone is, any victims are on, this, on the top floor, by protecting the stairs, being at the stairs, you're protecting them if the fire is on the first floor or the basement. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Guys, chime in here, tell me what you think. We'll let things progress. So you've seen, I saw a hand line, I saw a hand line shoot out there. So I think as we see here, the line is charged. And so I think they're getting a little knock on the fire from the rear. So this gentleman is calling for more pressure on the line. Again, I see this all the time, and this is one of my biggest pet peeves that I'll chime in here. 
kinks. Um, I don't know if guys, younger guys or some guys don't realize the importance of chasing out kinks. Uh, at many fires, we have these priorities of putting up ladders, and which I think is fantastic, and other things. But I'm telling you right now, the most important thing on the first hand line in the building is chasing kinks. And this gentleman um, should be cognizant of it. It, it. He's calling for the water pressure is bad, which they probably don't have the pump cranked up as far as it should be. But, you know, they say every kink you see has the potential of... of, of preventing about 30% of the flow. So here we, we went, you know, we went from an A to a 70 in one shot. So chase out your kinks, guys, please. Yo! Yo! Shane! More water! So you saw that he just uh, gave a little bit more pressure there, and now not only is this was that kink uh, existing before, but now it the line slid over and went up against the building, and I think it's even worse than it was before. So again, very important. I don't care who you are, chase your kinks. All right, one thing I want to show too, if you looked at that video, that the pictures that I showed initially from the article there were all these ladders thrown so again i don't know what happened but my, i my, i suspect what has occurred here prior to video is that this is the window of the victim i suspect that these ladders were used by um civilians and the police to um get this victim out i also suspect that because i guess this is a this is a curtain or something like that and um, it, I, I, I'm guessing that it came out the window because during the, uh, uh, the extrication of this patient, which was a 70-something-year-old female, not easy to do. You also see, if you go back and look at the, um, the article, this window is a little higher. This, if I had to guess, they're saying this may be a bedroom. If I had to guess, I would say this is the bedroom. I wouldn't say that this isn't a bedroom, but my gut tells me this is likely maybe the bathroom because the window's a little smaller and a little higher up and they generally do that. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. But um, ha trying to get out a 77-year-old woman is not easy. And the higher and the higher that window goes from the floor, uh, the more difficult that rescue is. So again, kudos to um, the police and the neighbors or whoever was involved in getting that victim out. I... I I suspect that was not easy. Um, I'm half surprised they get rid of these ladders so quickly uh, when the fire department got there, but I, assuming what I'm thinking has occurred, they did. So you see here, they're starting to move in the first hand line. Again, this is likely. Right, if I had to guess, I was showing you that floor, uh, that footprint, uh, blueprint from the uh, building. My guess is this is the dining room area, something like that. That's probably the kitchen window over the sink. Again, I think this is probably the bathroom, could be wrong. And then the uh, window all the way at the uh, Alpha Bravo Charlie. Charlie Delta corner is the um, uh, bedroom. So there's your victim.
So this is a little unusual, although I, I can see some, this is the officer, I assume, or I actually got a red helmet here. I'm not sure, but it sounds like this guy's the one talking. He's pulling guys out because he's got fire on the ground here in this kitchen area, or excuse me, dining room area. And guys are saying, hey, let's go in and make a push. I have to concede I agree with them. Although on the other hand, look, it's not a great idea to be passing fire either. I would just suggest that if you're inside the building 10 feet or more, you could just uh, turn the line back to this area that's burning. Whatever, I'm not gonna judge them too hard, but uh, without question, this is a fire that you can go in on unless there's been some bizarre scenario that we're not aware of where the floor is burned out here and there's some necessity to pull them out, but I think that's slim to zero. Anyway, that fire that he was concerned about is put out in an instant. So like I said, I would think could have been easily done from the inside, but whatever. So as I was saying before about stretching the line initially from uh, to the front door, you know, let me know what you guys think, you know, because that victim may have still been there or they, that was said on the radio or they didn't understand that the victim had already been taken out. You know, maybe that's why, maybe they are going against their typical uh, tactics here. And again, it is what it is at this point. All right, I can't not comment on this. So, look, I worked uh, in the volley days and also career times when we had limited staffing. And so a lot of times the engine would get there before truck companies or other manpower. And look, stretching the first line, the nozzles in my hand, to be carrying other tools is not um, is difficult in my view, especially if you have a whole you know pack on your shoulder. So I don't blame this the nozzle man for not having tools. And <laughs> I will concede, I have actually kicked several doors in my day. Uh, but if you're gonna if if you're gonna do it the wrong way, at least do it the wrong way, the right way. And my view is like face the door, and you know move forward and and give it a good kick uh, near near the knob. And uh, again, moving momentum forward. This facing the wrong way and, and donkey kicking it, you have no strength or no power and throwing your shoulder like that. So again, I know guys will probably make fun of me. Uh, you know, back in the day in the 60s and 70s and earlier, I think kicking doors is probably very common. Now we're, we do things with the irons and I, I'm not opposed to doing shit the right way because you can hurt yourself kicking doors or throwing your shoulder and whatever else, but like, Again, you're going to do it old school. At least do it, the like I said, do it the right way, the wrong way. Generally speaking, too, as a guy who worked in uh, suburbia uh, most of my life, you know, city doors are vastly more difficult to get open, uh, whether you're talking commercial or residential structures uh, because of crime and theft and so forth. A lot of city buildings are just fortified. Most civilian, most residential suburbia doors are, you know, they have a deadbolt, but it's basically, it's, you know, it's practically in the trim and, uh, and so, I don't think I ever had a problem if you put some amount of force on a uh, some ship wooden door in in uh, suburbia, the door should open pretty easily. But I'm sure there's always the exception.
so they're making entry and you can see as stated right here is the you step inside here and they're going up so to the left is up to the top floor and to the right is down to um again you want to call it the basement um it's a half you know like i said half above ground i've also found generally speaking sometimes these basements are uh unfinished sometimes they are completely finished i actually had the unfortunate circumstance back in my volunteer days when i was probably 18 19 of being extremely inexperienced we had a fire uh on the first floor the gas lines for somehow ruptured and were blowing fire uh underneath the uh the joists of the first floor i went i went upstairs went into a rear bathroom and fell through that's a story full story for another day So I will say again, my pet peeve, um, you know, chasing kinks again, right? There's 30%, there's 30. Um, I, for reasons I don't quite understand, guys don't, everyone, as soon as you see that, it should just be something that clicks in your head to fix. I don't know, I guess he's running out of water. It doesn't seem like they've flown that much water just yet. So at the end of the day here, they've put a good knock on the fire. Building is essentially saved. And so I just want to comment on one more thing here, uh, that it's just a pet peeve of mine that I've been commenting about since I started this channel. And half the country still doesn't believe me, but I'm going to keep trying and we'll see if maybe I can persuade somebody to change their mind. <laughs> so I've been I've been watching this type of incident for 30 years, I've seen it everywhere. I've seen it in career departments. I've seen it in my volunteer days. Um, I've done two videos on my channel, like I've said, and it's about why are we going to uh, peak roof single families to try to vent, um, particularly in instances like this. And I've seen this scenario more times than I can possibly remember. And so uh, this fire is essentially out. If I was an officer looking here, it's pretty knocked, smoke is light, nothing's pushing anywhere. It's just basically heat that's left in there. And 
again, this space, F, as, as I've mentioned multiple times and shown evidence of it, FDNY does not go on single family peaked roofs and they have the most single family peaked roofs in the United States. So when people say FDNY is FDNY and don't listen to them because you know they're Manhattan and they have skyscrapers. Yes, they do, but they have the most single family dwellings in the entire United States and they don't go to the roof. So um, I think it's a valid uh, argument. Anyway, let's proceed. They're also going to throw um, a single fly ladder here and hook the, hook the peak so that they can walk on this. Like, to me, this pitch is so low, I would not use this. In my view, guys that know better or that are on the roofs more than I've been, you tell me whether you'd use it. I say no. First of all, I wouldn't even go up here. But even if I was going to go up here, I wouldn't use this ladder. And if I'm using this ladder because I'm going to fall through, then why are we going up there in the first place? And lastly, uh, the point I've been trying to argue for since I started this channel is anywhere. And again, this is not against this department. I've seen this a thousand times. I can go in this building in any room anywhere and pull the ceilings down and I can see the rafters. I, I, I've seen this before. I've been on multiple fires where I'm inside the building with the nozzle looking up and I can see the blades spinning and the sparks flying from hitting nails and it's not doing anything. This isn't doing anything. The, on, the only thing this is doing, I would argue, is that it's increasing the likelihood that these two people could be seriously injured or killed on an incident. And again, this is nothing. This is nothing against this department because this happens every single day across the entire country. So I'm going to fast forward here a little bit. They're going to get up here. Cut away. And, and again, I, I'm not hurting me. I'm not judging these guys wherever else. They brought this ladder up. They they risk you know getting injured, bringing it up there, or having it slip, or climbing on it, or whatever else. And then they're standing on the on the roof anyway because it's damn near impossible to do your job on these stupid ladders. And so, um, <laughs> it's just the whole thing irritates me, as you can see. But anyway, they're 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 doing it. The, they're, they're cutting the way. If you're gonna cut the roof, this is how you have to do it. You have to get off that ladder. But my point will soon be uh, shown here. Go, man. Do you? Good. So here we go. When you when you open the roof and nothing comes out, like literally nothing, that's an indication uh, that you did nothing, provided nothing, didn't change the outcome of the fire. And again, no ill will to any of these guys. I have literally seen this exact scenario a million times. And so I'm just trying to convince people to stop doing it. But it's like in our DNA that we need to go on single family roofs and cut holes after the fire is three quarters of the way out or out uh, for purposes I don't know other than jeopardizing the lives of these guys potentially. You know, you slip and fall, you fall through, the rafters were burned. It, it's just there's there in my view there's only something there's only risk and no benefit all right you guys tell me what you think um i hope you like this video like i said my real purpose about it was ultimately talking about where the line gets stretched i think it should, should always be the front door but again maybe this isn't the greatest example because they had a victim and then so all bets are off i concede that point i'm thinking maybe that had already occurred but i could be wrong um, anyway, enough of me talking. You tell me what you think. Write your comments. Uh, uh, please follow. Keep continuing to follow my channel, and we'll see you at the next one.